Hello, my lovelies. I was going to wait uh, to make videos again until I was perfect, I guess. <laughs> I was going to wait until I felt more settled and um, I don't know. I It's kind of a funny thing. Like, I feel like if I'm not if I'm not presenting perfectly or coming across always as something that I can't describe at the moment because my my words escape me, that I shouldn't be making videos. But it's been a while and I've been kind of, you know, if you watch the video about trusting God in heartbreak about my husband, you know, and he's doing really well. Um, he is doing really well. Uh, I guess the emotional aftermath of everything with um, myself and my kids just dealing with our new reality with him being, um, yeah, going through a second heart attack and now being diabetic, that stuff. So, <clears throat> and still trusting God that the outcome of this will be good. But back to the topic at hand, which is a question of, what is something you have overcome? And I'm sure that this list for me, especially in the last year, could be very long because I feel like I've done a lot of work and God's been working in me in a lot of ways. Um, been healing a lot of areas in me that some of them I didn't even know were broken. Some of that's been really painful, difficult, but you come through on the other side because joy comes in the morning. And so the question is, what is something you've overcome? And this bit happened in two parts. I realized this was something I have overcome for one section of people. <laughs> and then I realized it is not something I had overcome with another section of people. A little back history. I was, I guess the term they use is bullied um, through middle school and high school by girls mostly, um, the same ones through middle school and high school, you know, they were incredibly wicked and whoever, um, anyone that's ever been through bullying knows that it makes no sense and they will just find any insecurity and pick at it, um, until I don't even know what their end goal is to disintegrate you. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't think I could have made myself any smaller to stay out of their way, but that aside, <clears throat> I always carried a um, certain insecurities about the things that they always mentioned um, about my physical appearance. You know, they they went after my personality as well, but I did a pretty good job of making myself invisible and small through school so I could get through it. Um, and the physical appearance stuff and everyone could say what they wanted you know my mother um, always said those girls are jealous of you because of whatever and that's that's neither here nor there that part doesn't matter I carried with me this you know constant insecurities about certain things that they pointed out you know over and over and over and over and I would be very deeply affected well into my adult life if anyone mentioned any of those things again. And I would be brought back into the feelings of what I felt when those girls were doing that. So I built up walls um, against comments by people that I am not close to. Because when you work in the public, um, people make comments all day long and some of them are kind and some of them are not. And I had to build up like a defense system so that I wouldn't get thrown back into that emotional state every time someone mentioned the color of my eyes, the shape of my face, the, the size of my nose, the way my body was put together. You know, 
And even if they were positive comments, I still sometimes would then go back into the insecurities and I would go into a place where I felt that I wasn't suitable for public viewing, that I should hide myself, stay home, um, and not let anyone see me. And as irrational as that sounds, that was my reality for a while. But So that I said this was in two parts. The first part, um, I realized because I saw one of my tormentors in person a few weeks ago. And she worked at the place that I pick up my meat uh, because I buy, you know, like a whole, a whole hog at a time, you know, processed and I buy like a whole beef at a time. And that's just what we do, we've done that for years and years. So then I have to go to the butcher and pick that up. And this gal uh, works, works there. And now I haven't seen her probably since high school, maybe once or twice after that. And of course I've never spoken to her because why would I? Um, but I realized in seeing her again and the sight of her did not give me that fear, insecurity, and terrified state, making me want to make myself very small. I looked her right in the eyes and felt strong and smiled and was very professional and polite. And I looked in her eyes, probably for the first time ever, and I could see her pain and her brokenness and I actually felt sad for her. Now we're talking about a 40 year old woman, you know, because she's the same age as I am. And you know, whatever she did, I have no idea what she's like now because I haven't obviously had any association with her. But I realized in that moment and as I got back in my car and loaded up my meat, you know, I realized that I have overcome that trauma of being harassed and tormented by a group of girls in high school and praise God because I'm 40 and that's like 20 plus years ago. So now when people make comments about my appearance, um, people that don't know me well anyway, people that aren't close to me, they kind of just bounce off of me. I don't really think much of it. I think, you know, I'm uniquely created as is everyone and that's fine. And they can think what they want. The other half of this that I have not overcome is when people make similar comments that are very close to me, it is still triggering and it's still hurtful and it still can throw me back into a place of um, insecurity and fear and um, wanting to hide myself. So Still some more work to do, and I'm thankful for being shown that. Um, the last time it happened, it was an extremely painful and surprising to me because I thought that I had overcome the entire thing. I thought I had a confidence in myself and the way I was that I, you know, I was infallible, you know, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> but anyway, that is something I've overcome. I have overcome the negative effects of other people's comments due to adolescent trauma. And um, yeah, that girl that I saw, I was actually kind of proud of myself and that I could actually look her in the eye with some fire. Um, maybe I need to forgive her, but I did look her in the eye with some fire and I saw recognition in her face. She knew who I was. And all I saw in her was pain and sorrow. And yeah, so time to forgive her. Time to forgive her group of friends, um, despite what they did. And time to overcome that thing. And I'm sure there's more important things I've overcome, but that is what came into my mind for today. And so I pose a question to you. What is something that you have overcome, big or little? because little is important too. We start with the little things and we work towards the big things. So 
We'll see. Freezing cold day today. Negative 10 Fahrenheit this morning. So I will not be going outside if I don't have to. It is chilly. But anyway, have a great day, guys. Live and love by the way you were created.